Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech, and today is part three of the sword tutorial build. Now, this is going to be a pretty simple, um, straightforward thing, and um, basically what I'm going to be doing is splitting up the sword, and when I do that, I have um, two goals in mind. One is to make the pieces fit within my, um, my printer build volume, and both my printers go up to about 200 millimeters in height, so that's usually what I scale to. And the second reason is to um, try to split it up to make it print a little bit easier. And that means, um, you know, avoiding supports where possible and just doing things like that to um, maximize the ease of printing. So I'm just going to walk through that process with you um, using this broadsword that we created in the last one. So if you haven't seen the first and the second part of this, uh, check the eye up in the corner um, and uh, get caught up on those. And then let's get slicing. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, the first is just create offset planes and like we'll turn on the origin here and we can click that as a plane and just drag these to where we want to split it. But um, it's a little bit harder to keep track of the math in your head and um, keep dimensionally accurate. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is create a sketch. And now, I don't know if this is the best way to do this, um, but this is the, just the way that I do it, and it works out. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create little rectangles where I need to split things up. And then I will use the bottom face of those rectangles to actually split it. So let's go down here. This is the very bottom one. So let's find out where the 200 mark is. So if I come up there, that is 250. So we know that we cannot print this handle in one piece. So it looks like a good splitting point for it would be right there. So that looks good. So I'm gonna hit R to go into the rectangle tool, come there. And over here, I'm just going to create a little rectangle. And I'm actually gonna go up with it. And then I will do the same right up here because I know that's not um, quite 200. Now in this area of the sword really showcases what I mean when I try to avoid supports. So I'm going to drag this down a bit just to be out of our way. Um, so that right there, you would need supports just about any way you orient it. So what I'm going to do is split it along one of these lines and um, that way we can print it without supports. So I think if we print along this bottom face here, um, we can print this with it, and then we can just print this top piece as a sec uh, separate piece. So I'll hit R again, and I'll just split it right here and come up and do that. And you'll see why I'm creating these um, boxes here in just a little bit. So from this point down here, we can come up and find where our 200 point is. And like I said, this the 200 is because of my printer. So if your printers are different sizes, um, you know, if you have like a G Max, these parts are going to be a lot bigger. If you have something smaller, they're going to be smaller. So use this to kind of help you tailor the prints to your printer. So that's about 200 there. And I always like to give myself a little bit of leeway. So I'm going to come down to about here and I'll just do that. And this is basically just repeating this process until we get what we want here. And something to keep in mind is there's a lot of tools available to you so you don't have to do this manually if you don't want to. Like you can use the um, patterning tool uh, right here and do all sorts of crazy things to get this to um, work for you. But this is so simple, I don't really mind doing it myself. And one more thing to keep in mind when you're creating something like this is that every time you break this, you're gonna have a seam. And um, seams can be difficult to cover up and oftentimes they involve filling it with some sort of substance and then sanding the crap out of it. So um, something to keep in mind is where you're placing those seams because right here, if we look and I go 200 up, you'll see that the seam places us right through the top of that tip. And you know, something on an angle like that probably wouldn't be too hard to, to sand but um, I, th I bet it would be easier down here. So instead of going up there, I'm just gonna go down here and create that because then we can print this top piece in one, it'll split right about here and the sanding will be easier down here. So you can see I've placed break points right along there. Um, and I wanna reiterate again that this is probably not the best way to do this, but it's, it's simple, easy to understand and this is what I use most of the time. So um, that's what I'm going with. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sketch 
And then I'm just gonna go through and extrude all of these up. Doesn't matter how tall because these are ultimately just placeholders and we'll be getting rid of them. So now what the process should be is going through and splitting this object and selecting the bottom faces of these as the, um, the split tool. So I come to split body and then body to split is this one and then the splitting tool is this bottom face here. So you can see that Fusion creates a little ring right there letting you know what it's gonna cut and that's exactly what we wanted. So I will hit OK. So now those are two separate pieces and if I come up to bodies, I can hide one of those sides. So I'm gonna repeat that process down the sword and some of them I won't need to because um, they're naturally split. So like right there, we left that separate and so I'll just hit OK. Okay, so I've split up the blade and then it looks like I was smart enough to leave all of these separate when I was creating it. So now it's just a process of combining the ones we want. So I was gonna combine these two. Um, so looks like we got body four and body two. So I will just combine those real quick. Join, hit okay. And then I will do the same for these two pieces here. Hit join and okay. So now we can get rid of all of these um, little placeholder pieces. You can hide them if you want, you can delete them. Um, I won't need them again at this point, so I am just going to uh, delete them. And remember in Fusion 360, um, remove is what you want, not actually delete, because um, it'll mess with the timeline if you actually delete things. So now that everything is split the way that you want it to be, um, you should go through and name everything according to how you want to print it. It'll just make things um, a little bit smoother while you're organizing things and when you're actually printing. So I recommend naming them, and it can be just as simple as like, going to the tip here and naming that um, sword A, and then finding this piece here, sword B, and so on in that fashion. Because that way it'll tell you um, exactly what pieces go where and um, when you're printing them, how to sort of assemble them afterwards. So for some projects, you could probably stop at this point if you're just gluing them together, but where this is going to be a giant sword, um, it's gonna need some sort of support through the middle. Now, um, you can do that with printed pieces, although you should be aware that printed pieces do have quite a bit of flex to them, um, obviously depending on what material you use. But like for me, I mostly use PLA, and PLA does have a significant amount of flex to it if you print long, thin pieces, which you would need to um, split this up. So that's very possible, and it works. It keeps the sword together, um, and mixed with glue and things like that, it really does a good job. But ultimately, you will get some flex in the sword, and that's probably not something you want. So what I actually recommend doing is go to your local hobby store, your local hardware store or something like that, and finding some sort of maybe wooden dowel that's small enough to fit in the, in the middle of your entire project, or um, some sort of like carbon fiber rod. You can buy those online. They're, they come pretty small, and they're very, very sturdy. You're basically just looking for something you can stick through the middle of your project, glue all of the pieces together on top of it that will hold it rigid. That way you're not depending on the printed parts to um, do that for you. So let's assume that you've gotten just a um, small wooden dowel or something like that, and um, we're gonna stick it right through the middle of all of these pieces. So this obviously is going to be our thinnest part of the sword, so let's find out how big that actually is. So it looks like we've got 20 millimeters to work with, which is not a lot. So um, we would need probably the max size we could put in there would be something around like 14 millimeters, but even that would be um, cutting it close. So um, let's just assume we can find like a 10 millimeter rod that we can stick in the middle of this. So what I'm gonna do is come to sketch, create sketch, and then um, I am just going to create a line through most of this. So I don't want it to pop out the end here because I do want it to be confined, but you want it to um, encompass the the edge pieces. So I'll go about here, and then I will go all the way up to the top of the sword near the tip. We'll go right there, just right through the center of the whole thing. And then once we have that, we can come through and um, go out five millimeters, because when revolved, that will give us um, the hole that we need. 
So now we can come up to create and I'm gonna revolve. You can all also do this um, with a, like a rectangular piece, a square piece or something like that instead of a cylinder. It depends on what you find and what you wanna create. Now if I hit okay at this point, it will just um, cut all of that out because I have it set to cut. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now if I hide one of these pieces, you should be able to see that there is a hole pretty much all the way through the model. And likewise, if I hide that one, we can see there's a hole down there. Now when we print this, um, we can just insert whatever we need to in the middle of this and glue things around it and it should be good to go. Now if you do want to keep it um, strictly with 3D printed pieces and not find something else to put in the middle of it, we can come through and um, create little pins. And you'll see that I've done this for quite a few of my builds. Um, and the more I do it, the more I realize it's not that great of an idea. Um, it just makes it very, it makes the part very flimsy. Um, and you should really find something quite a bit sturdier than your printed parts to go in the middle of something big like this, especially that you're gonna be grabbing at one end and the bulk of the weight is on the other end. But if we wanted to do that, we can just come through and create a, since we created a cylinder, we can create a, a, just a slightly smaller cylinder that we can um, use as a pin. So I'll come here and we created a 10 millimeter cylinder. So instead of 10, um, I like to leave about a 0.4 millimeter um, gap on either side for tolerance and you'll uh, have to play with that just a little bit to find what fits snug because you really do want these to fit snug so there's no wiggle room in there. So to take off 0.4 I'm just gonna go 9.6. I'll hit OK and then just extend that up and it really doesn't matter how big you go just enough to give you a little bit of room in between. So for this one I'm actually gonna go like uh, f maybe 50. Actually let's go 60. So I'll hit OK and so now when we print these they can go in the middle and actually looking at this now um, if I was going to do this I would go with a rectangular one so I could print it on its side because a cylinder you pretty much have to print like this and it's gonna be weakest along its layer lines so um, printing like this is not gonna do you a lot of good you're probably gonna have a lot of broken pins so um, if you aren't gonna have something cylindrical to insert that's not printed definitely do um, rectangular so you can print it on its side. That way the strong side will be along the path of your uh, of the pieces you want to put together. So now the only step left is to orient them how you want them to print. So like this piece down here for example, if I highlight that, um, I would probably want to print it on the bottom down here or over here. They'd pro it would probably print just fine either way, but I think I will go like this and just rotate it 90 degrees this way. And now luckily with Fusion, you don't have to put it perfectly on the bed. Um, it'll do that while exporting, but I kind of like to have them all in the same plane. So that's just your personal preference. But then I will just come through and do that for each piece until I have everything in a printable state. Okay, so now when I pull back, you can see that everything is oriented the way it should print. So now I can literally just right click on each of these, save as STL, and print them. It's that easy. Now obviously with things like this um, that need to go flush against each other, you'll want to make sure that you have warping pretty under control. So if your um, printer tends to warp a lot, then these will be a lot harder to fix in the post-processing. Okay guys, well I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to get those answered for you. Um, so let me know if I left anything out or if you'd like to see me expand on anything here and there. And then also let me know if there's any subject for future tutorials, um, something that you're maybe dealing with that you'd like some help on. I'm planning on doing at least one tutorial video a week, so uh, I definitely hope to get into doing a little bit more of this. So let me know. All right, guys, hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.